Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us for this session of EDUCAUSE Demo Day Tools for Enhancing Hybrid Learning. I'm your host, Emily Davis. Please use the chat to share comments or ask questions to our presenters. And if you would like to view the closed captioning, just click the CC Live Transcript button at the bottom of your Zoom room. Now, please welcome me in joining our presenters, David and Peter from Vocarium. Hello, everyone. My name is David Lin. I'm the Vice President of Business Development at Vocarium. And with me today is Peter Kim, who is a senior engineer on our team. In terms of an agenda, we will start with a brief introduction to Volcarium, then kick right into demos of our AI labs and cloud management solution. For those of you who are not familiar with Volcarium, we provide a virtual lab platform built specifically for learning, research, and assessments of digital skills. Our labs are delivered through the browser and have a flexible infrastructure to support a wide range of use cases including interactive computing via uh, Jupyter Notebooks or Volcarium Notebook, uh, cloud computing through AWS, Azure, and GCP, programming, data science labs, and much more. We do operate at scale. So we have about two and a half, uh, three million learners and are starting about 125,000 cloud labs every single day. One of our largest deployments is uh, with AWS Academy uh, part of AWS training and certification, which crossed over 1 million learners uh, back in July. Volcarium is the management and delivery platform for all of their hands-on AWS labs environment. Over 6,000 universities and colleges are using this platform. We're also proud, proud to be the lab platform for Databricks, who recently launched a generative AI course on edX. Apart from AWS and Databricks, we do have direct relationships with hundreds of universities worldwide. We are also working with uh, quite a number of edtech partners, including uh, edX, uh, Coursera, Udemy, Udacity, Simply Learn, um, through for their online programs. As you can imagine, we do have a huge focus on AI education right now. Our thesis is that to teach AI effectively, you have to deliver it with cloud resources. Uh, it's no longer enough to simply ask learners to work on their laptops or even to use on-prem data centers. You need access uh, to GPUs, to cloud like AWS or Azure. Uh, plus you need to leverage the latest and greatest of generative AI systems like OpenAI or Anthropic and other new models. All of these resources cost money uh, so our platform helps you to, to manage them as part of your integrated learning environment. At this point, I'd like to hand the baton over to Peter, who will give you all a deeper look into Volcarium's AI solutions. All right. Thanks. <clears throat> Thanks, David. Hi, everyone. My name is Peter Kim, and today I'll be demonstrating how Vercarium is meeting the industry's AI demands with our cloud solutions. Generative AI is an amazing tool that anyone, regardless of technical background, can take advantage of. However, everyone who tries to teach AI at scale seems to be hitting the same roadblocks. The biggest ones we've seen are allocating resources, managing budgets, and integrating with an LMS. For this demonstration, I'll be focusing on three of the services that we provide to help facilitate AI learning. Budgeted OpenAI access, budgeted GPU resources, and auto-graded assignments with great, pa great passback to your LMS. And I'll be showing off how to deliver these services through two IDEs, our very own Vercarium Notebook, Jupyter Lab, and a pure JavaScript and HTML example. Please feel free to ask any questions in the chat, and we'll take some time at the very end to answer them. Now let's jump right in with Vocarium Notebook. So first of all, what is Vocarium Notebook? What you see here is Vocarium Notebook. It's our completely custom, built from the ground up IDE, specifically designed to enhance the experience of learning AI. Just like Jupyter Notebook, it can open and execute notebook files 
but we have added our own enhancements specifically for GPU and OpenAI use. If you've tried to deliver OpenAI at scale, then you're faced with a hard choice. Do you ask every user to create their own OpenAI account and API key, or do you provide unrestricted access to your organization's own key? We at Vocarium saw this issue and decided to come up with our own solution. We've created our own API endpoint that accepts a unique key Vocarium generates for every student. This Vocarium key, passed along as an environment variable to the lab, is then used to keep track of the tokens spent in order to calculate the user's remaining budget. We currently support chat completion for GPT 3.5, GPT 4, and Azure OpenAI. All we need from you, all we need from you is your organization's single OpenAI key that you share with us. So I'm going to go ahead and configure the OpenAI package to use our API key and base and then feed a couple prompts to the ChatGPT 3.5 Turbo model. Before that, however, I want to explore another way that you can use Vocarium to send prompts to OpenAI. What you see here is what we call the prompt cell type. Just like any other Jupyter cell type, the prompt cell is added by creating a new cell and then changing the type to prompt. Unlike other cell types, what the prompt cell does is it allows you to directly communicate with OpenAI without starting a notebook kernel. You can specify the model that you want to use, as well as a couple other settings, such as temperature and top P. I'm going to go ahead and ask for a few tips on how to write a good prompt. And using those tips, I have crafted a good and bad prompt regarding AI in the field of healthcare. You can see those two prompts here. And because it can take a while to get a response, for the sake of time, I'm going to go ahead and start execution of those prompts as well. So as those prompts are running and we wait for a response, I'd like to draw everyone's attention to the bottom left here. There's an open AI icon as well as a dollar value. That dollar value represents the remaining budget that the user has for this assignment. Clicking on the icon, opens a tab which reveals some more details about the user's budget and credentials. Please pay close attention to the use budget field here and watch as in real time it updates as soon as a response from OpenAI is received. So already we can see that we've accrued some spend for this uh, 10 cent budget that I've assigned for this assignment. And the budget, as I said, will always be updated, giving the user accurate information about their usage. I'd like to clarify here that the response is the same as if one had asked ChatGPT directly. All Vocarium is doing is serving as the middleman generating keys and enforcing budgets. For those of you interested in teaching prompt engineering, we believe that Vocarium Notebook is the perfect tool because of its simplicity and ease of use with the prompt cell type. Moving on to our next assignment, the example I have here will demonstrate our GPU integration, also using Vocarium Notebook. For GPUs, the challenge has always revolved around cost. We all know that GPUs are expensive, so how do you ensure that they're being efficiently used and that someone isn't keeping a machine running while being idle? Yet the immense increase of performance that they offer means that they are a necessity for teaching and learning AI. At Vocarium, we tackled this problem by separating out the presentation from the execution. Here's what I mean. Anything that you run interactively using the Vocarium Notebook IDE is being run on a machine's CPU. The machine doesn't even have a GPU on it. But when you're ready to run some code that requires a GPU, with just one click, you can schedule a batch job, which will take the currently selected notebook and queue it up to be run on our GPU servers. When there are jobs in the queue, we will launch GPUs to meet demand. And as soon as the queue is empty, we will terminate them. This way, we are able to deliver GPU resources while minimizing cost, all while giving the user freedom to work on anything that does not require a GPU. And for those of you concerned about potential abuse and crypto mining, we're very conscious about these issues and have implemented strict controls around GPU memory consumption and timeout limits on job duration all in addition to individual budgets set by the instructor. 
For this example, I have two notebooks, one for training a model and another for performing inference with the model. Although I could combine the two notebooks into one, by splitting them up this way, I can perform the training on the GPU. And once the model has been created, I can run inference on the CPU. Now, a little bit about myself. Growing up, I was a big Harry Potter fan. I read all the books and watched all the movies. And I wanted to combine my love for Harry Potter with AI by fine tuning a GPT-2 model on around 500 Harry Potter trivia questions. Once the training is finished, I will then ask it a couple of prompts to verify that the training was successful. So in this notebook here, I load the text file to find some training functions and then download the GPT-2 model from Hugging Face into my work area and then train it. All I need to do to run this entire notebook on a GPU is, by, is to click this Run Training button here. As soon as I do, a job will be queued and the next available GPU server will take the notebook and execute it. Already, you might have noticed that there were some pop-ups in the bottom right. Every time that the job status is changed, we make sure to notify the user. At the top bar here, we have an LED specifying the status of our batch servers, whether they are offline, currently launching to meet demand, or available. And finally, in the bottom left, we have a GPU icon as well as the user's remaining time budget in minutes uh, at a glance. Just like with the OpenAI example, clicking on it shows more budget details, which will update in real time whenever a job finishes. Executing the notebook is expected to take a couple minutes. So for the sake of time efficiency, I've already, uh, <clears throat> I've already run a training previously. Once a training completes, we create a directory under here, batch executions. And in it, we have a copy of the notebook with all of its outputs saved, as well as an output file that captures standard input and standard error. So I'm going to go ahead and open the notebook here that I've already trained. So here, we can see that the outputs have been saved, then that the notebook has been run. If we go to the bottom here, we can confirm that the notebook was indeed run on our 16 gigabyte machine, and it took around four gigabytes of memory in the process. And with the power of a GPU, this notebook, which would normally take over an hour to execute on a CPU, finished in just under two minutes. So before I run the inference notebook, I want to wait for this job to finish. OK, so we see the pop up here that the training has successfully completed. And if I go to the back executions directory, yeah, we can see that this is the training that I just completed. So now I'm going to go ahead and run the inference notebook. So once again, at the top, I've defined a helper function that will get a response from the model. And I have a couple questions here. My first being, what is a Thestral? The model responds, an invisible horse-like creature. Second question, name a Quidditch position. The model responds with Seeker. So for any of you unfamiliar with Harry Potter, I can confirm that the responses are indeed accurate. And finally, at the bottom here, we can confirm that there was no GPU used when running the cells interactively. By executing individual notebooks as a batch job, we can minimize GPU server uptime and cost while still providing GPU access reliably and on demand. Researchers can queue long running jobs, step away from them, and come back the next day with the results ready. Instructors can give students GPU performance while still maintaining tight budget controls. Now, if you're an instructor, providing access to resources like OpenAI and GPU is a great way to facilitate learning using real industry standard tools. But what really seems to get instructors excited is how easy it is to integrate Vocarium with an LMS of your choice. Whether it be Canvas or Blackboard, all you need to do is drop in our LTI link. There's no need for the user to log in or create an account separately on our platform. 
and we support all the features that come with LTAI 1.1 and 1.3. We've even added our own additions, such as role-based access, roster syncing, and support for multiple LMS courses linking to a single Vocarium course. What may be our most loved feature, however, is auto-grading. At Vocarium, we want to make the grading process as simple as can be. And to do that, we've added custom auto-grading cells right inside the Jupyter Notebook. In this notebook here, I've already set up the auto-grading cells as an instructor. The notebook is a very simple one that goes over how to use loops in Python. And the first question here at the bottom, yep. It asks us to create a list of squares from this given list. Now, I've already inputted the correct answer for this question, and I'm going to go ahead and submit the assignment now. After just a few seconds, I get feedback inserted directly into the notebook, and a side panel pops out showing me all of my grades, as well as additional submission information. As expected, I only got the first question correct. But let me show you what happens when I go to the grades page in Canvas. You can see here that the results of the auto grading were passed back to Canvas with gradebook items automatically created. With that, this concludes the Vocarium notebook portion of the demo. Whether it be prompt cells, auto grading cells, or running training jobs, through our custom interface, we've tailored the user experience for interactivity and ease of use. Now, while we believe that the simplicity of Vocarium Notebook is one of its strengths, sometimes you need a fully fledged IDE if you need to work with more than just Jupyter Notebooks. Well, Vocarium has you covered there too, because we also offer a Jupyter Lab environment with all of the features that I've shown off so far budgeted OpenAI, budgeted GPU, and auto grading. This is our Jupyter Lab IDE. We've moved the budget information to the top bar here so that users can still see at a glance exactly how much of their budget remains in real time. Here I have an example OpenAI notebook. This uses some of the code from the previous example. And just like before, we're taking our API key and base, and from that, using the OpenAI Python library is as easy as can be. Now, for batch execution, the flow is largely the same as it was with Vocarium Notebook. However, in addition to specifying a Jupyter Notebook to execute as a job, we've also added the ability to run a shell script instead. Here, I have a very basic script that lists the files in the current directory and creates an output file. When I click Run Batch Job in the top corner here, the top level of the user's work area will be scanned for all notebook files and shell scripts. So I'm going to go ahead and run the example script. Just like before, a job gets queued and is then sent to an available GPU server. Here we can see the output file that was created. And once again, we have the batch executions directory with a timestamp subdirectory containing standard output and standard error. So by allowing a shell script to be run as a batch job, the user has the freedom to work with any programming language of their choosing. We expect this to be especially useful to researchers that need to execute code that isn't suitable for just a Jupyter notebook. Now, I have one final example to show off for my demo. Now, what if you want something even simpler than Vocarian Notebook for users that don't have any programming experience? Or what if you want to build your own custom UI to deliver OpenAI? Well, we have created a JavaScript library that provides our budgeted OpenAI access that can be used as a source in any HTML file. What you see here is a readme file that I created very quickly using Bootstrap. It's just a singular HTML file that is importing our JavaScript library. In the HTML file, I have added additional JavaScript so that the send prompt button sends a request to our API endpoint using the parameters inputted in this top area. 
I'm going to go ahead and send this basic prompt now. And just like that, it's that easy to provide yet another way for users to get budgeted OpenAI access. And you can see the budget up here. Because all we've provided here is a single JavaScript file, the presentation of the page is completely up to you. We're really excited to see what users will come up with. And that concludes my portion of the demo. I hope you're just, just as excited as we are in finding new ways to deliver AI to both educators and students alike. If you would like to try for yourself the course that I've shown here today, please provide your email address for the poll that should be sent right about now. And with that, I'm going to hand it back off to David, who's going to go over the cloud management portion of our platform. Thanks, Peter. I'm going to let folks um, enter their emails if they would like to participate. Uh, and we'll probably switch gears in about 30 seconds. Uh, to a demo of our cloud account management solutions. Okay, so um, let's get started. Um, so our cloud management solution is basically a way for you to consolidate and manage all of your existing AWS accounts, provision new accounts to new learners or researchers, and to provide safeguards and budget controls to ensure proper use and prevent unexpected spend. This here is one of our organization level dashboards for AWS account management, where you can see that we have spent about $400 uh, this year across about 7,500 user accounts in two master payer accounts. Of these 7,500 7, accounts, there are about 3,000 in use by learners and researchers today. If we click on to spend here, we go to the dashboard detailing how the accounts were used, including which courses or projects um, were, were incurring the charges. In this case, if I click on a course, I can click in and see the spend uh, per lab inside this course. And so you'll see that there's two different labs, one AWS lab and one Jupyter lab. If I click into lab, then I can actually see what services are used. And here the predominant usage is EC2 uh, virtual machines. Okay, if we go back to the account management page, we can also go in and, uh, and manage the, uh, the payer accounts or actually the, uh, the member accounts here. So here we can see that we've got a couple uh, master payer accounts with a set of um, linked learner accounts or research accounts. At the, and so we can see the spend over the last six months, plus the spend in the last eight hours, and a total spend and the budget. So the budget is 300 for this one, and $200 have been spent. If we click in, we can actually see exactly how the spend was um, was incurred, right? And so we'll see that you know for this one we had uh, some T2 micro instances and some storage, and we can even go and visit the uh, AWS account as well. Okay, and so this will give us a view into the actual AWS account that the uh, the user had and uh, allow you to manage it. Uh, of course, everything within uh, these accounts are controlled, right? And so we provide various ways to safeguard these accounts, uh, including through service limits, through service control policies, through budgets and, cur and concurrency checks. Uh, if we go back into the AWS management uh, console, we also have uh, the, man the ability to manage the payer accounts. And what we mean by this is we can go in and add additional payer accounts. So if you're trying to consolidate the accounts uh, within your organization institution, you can bring them into, um, into Volcarium to, to manage. And from within a master payer account, we can go and generate accounts as well. And so we can generate, um, oops, I'm not sure what, oh, because uh, we haven't entered anything in there. But uh, so we can generate a number of accounts. Um, you know, so right now the, the max that you can generate is about 5,000 accounts. 
And so this one has maxed out, but this one we can generate another 2,500 accounts. Okay, and then Volcarium will automatically provision those accounts to um, to the users as they uh, as they come in. And so um, that really allows you to um, scale and support the the learning and and research. And then of course you can also fund the accounts with educational cloud credits. From the learner exp uh, experience, they can actually enter the lab in a number of different ways, including from the LMS uh, as uh, Peter was showing. Uh, we do have the ability to have, for example, a sandbox environment in which uh, learners can go and launch into the a AI sandbox that, uh, that Peter was talking about or straight into AWS accounts uh, or even Azure or GCP accounts. As you can see, we provide a pretty simple but comprehensive solution for managing and tracking your cloud resources. We're also building out the same um, management solution for our GPU and AI labs. Um, as a CIO at Stanford said to us the other day, uh, Volcarium's two core values are LMS integration into you know, uh, tools like Canvas or um, D2L, and then also um, in managing all the costs whether it's a cloud, GPU, or AI. So at this point, uh, I'd like to open the floor to questions. I believe uh, you should be able to submit them through through the chat. And uh, also, if you have interest in trying out the platform, uh, I think we will have another uh, opportunity to, to sign up. OK, thanks again for your time and interest. Remember everyone, if you have questions, you are welcome to put those questions in the chat. There is a session poll that has been launched. And if you're interested in that AI, AI course, you can uh, leave your email information there. Yeah, so um, there's a question about cost. Uh, so basically our subscription is uh, $10 per active learner per month and all the other resource costs, whether it's uh, cloud or uh, AI, open AI or GPU costs, those are all passed through. So it's, um, so so the actual cost is, uh, is actually the amount that the, the learner might um, incur, but then the cost to Volcarium or the, uh, the payment to Volcarium is $10 per student per month. And of course, at scale, we, we have uh, different pricing. So there's Another a question. One is, um, yeah. how, how can you configure the GPU that you provide, uh, Peter? Yeah. So uh, we have basically any GPU offered by AWS we can configure and uh, so that isn't configurable by instructors, but organization admins can go in and basically select a instance type to associate with the course. And then uh, any assignments that course uses will automatically be sent to use that GPU server. Great, any other questions on that? There's a question about uh, which LMSs uh, are supported. Uh, pretty much any uh, LMS that uh, you know that uses LTI, we will support. Uh, so we do support Canvas, um, Detail, Moodle, uh, and then we also support uh, edtech platforms like uh, Canvas or Coursera or um, or edX. And we also do have. Um, uh, APIs. So if uh, if you have custom integrations, uh, we can we can support that, and uh, access to you know the resources we can also do through through SAML um, and SSO. And so if your researchers, for example, need access to cloud labs, uh, they don't have to come in through through an LMS.
There's a question about analytics. Oh, actually, let's before that, there's a, how do we use AWS credits? So if your institution was granted uh, credits by AWS, you will be able to apply them to, um, to the payer accounts and, uh, and have it distributed. And through, as I mentioned, through the, um, the individual uh, user accounts, they all have budgets and controls. Right, so they can do learning and researchy things, but not, uh, and we we can help pre uh, prevent uh, misuse or accidental uh, over over uh, overspend. And then there was a question about analytics, and we do have uh, some analytics as we were showing, and then we also have a data pipeline. So as um, as the users are consuming resources or they are you know performing their work we do have analytics on student uh, activity for example submissions of um, of work that uh, that Peter is showing or you know resource consumption that's that's all covered any other questions? All right, wonderful. If there are no more questions, uh, we can give everybody a few minutes of their time back. On behalf of Educause, I want to thank you so much, Peter and David, for your presentation today. And thanks to all of you for joining this demo session. The survey poll will remain up for just uh, a couple more minutes. And remember, the demo recording and all of the resources are available uh, later on today on the event site. And in the chat, you are receiving a friendly little link to Vocarium's event page where there's a slew of additional resources. Thank you so much for joining and have a great day. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Have a great one. Thank you, Emily.